Holber, senior pastor at Heritage Presbyterian Church in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Here I am doing morning prayer on my back patio with all of the sunshine and the singing birds and the barking squirrels just around the corner somewhere. <laughs> They're all around here somewhere. Anyways, I um, wanted to say happy birthday to a few folks. Uh, this is a uh, birthday for at least three people. I know there are several others as well, but Samuel Leonard, happy birthday, Samuel. And also Jennifer Greenberg, happy birthday, Jennifer. And Jared Nilsson, happy birthday, Jared. We're going to pray for all of you and all the others having birthdays after uh, catechism reading and, and Bible reading in just a minute. So this morning we are in the Heidelberg Catechism. We're just working our way through the catechism. Hard to see because of the sun. We're working our way through the Heidelberg Catechism. And uh, we're at question 75. I'm just going to do one question today. And it's the part of the catechism dealing with the Lord's Supper. How is it signified and sealed unto you in the Holy Supper that he that you partake of the one sacrifice of Christ on the cross and all his benefits? Thus, that Christ has commanded me and all believers to eat of this broken bread and to drink of this cup and has joined therewith these promises. First, that his body was offered and broken on the cross for me and his blood shed for me. As certainly as I see with my eyes the bread of the Lord broken for me and the cup communicated to me. And further, that with his crucified body and shed blood, he himself feeds and nourishes my soul to everlasting life. As certainly as I receive from the hand of the minister and taste with my mouth the bread and the cup of the Lord, which, you, which are given me as certain tokens of the body and the blood of Christ. That was Heidelberg Catechism. Question and answer 75. We're reading our way through Malachi. We just started yesterday. It's a great uh, book to read during Advent. And so we are at Malachi chapter 1, starting at verse 5. Remember to follow the dialogue that goes on where God makes an assertion. The people respond, how will we do that? And then God shows them. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am a father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my fear, says the Lord of hosts, to you, O priests, who despise my name? But you say, how have we despised your name? By offering polluted food upon my altar. But you say, how have we polluted you? By saying that the Lord's table may be despised. When you offer blind animals and sacrifice, is that not evil? And when you offer those that are lame or sick, is that not evil? Present that to your governor. Will he accept you or show you favor, says the Lord of hosts? And now entreat the favor of God that he may be gracious with you, with that to us. And now entreat the favor of God that he may be gracious to us, with us. With such a gift from your hand, will he show favor to any of you, says the Lord? Of hosts, oh, that there were one among you who would shut the doors that you might not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hand. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations, and in every place incense will be offered to my name and a pure offering. For my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you profane it when you say that the Lord's table is polluted. Let me turn the page here. And its fruit, that is, its food may be despised. But you say, what a weariness this is. And you snorted it, says the Lord of hosts. You bring what was has been taken by violence or is lame or sick, and this you bring as your offering. Shall I accept, accept that from your hand, says the Lord? Cursed be the cheat who has made who has a male in his flock and vows it and yet sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my chapter 1, verses 5 through 14. You can hear somebody with their tree trimmer going over there. Let's try to make this quick. Lord, we thank you that... Uh, you do dialogue with us and you draw us to yourself and you call us to be your own and to be faithful and genuine towards you. Lord, we pray for those who are having birthdays today. We ask you to bless them. 
May this birthday be a wonderful birthday. And we ask that you would fill them with joy and with your Holy Spirit and strengthen them all this week and all this year, Lord. We pray, Lord, for Captain McClellan of uh, the 145th Aviation Battalion at Fort Rucker, that you would bless him as a chaplain, that you would guide and strengthen him to be faithful, that he'd be faithful to you and you would open opportunities of being able to proclaim the gospel to others. We pray that you would bless his marriage and strengthen him. We ask you, Lord God, that you would be with the Compassion International office staff members in Indonesia as they try to make decisions on how best to care for the staff folks and those that they're working with there in Indonesia. Watch over them, Lord God. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick. We know many who have uh, COVID, some from our own church and others. We ask you to give them strength and comfort that you would guide and hold them in your hands and bless them, Lord, and grant them full recovery. Be with Gary and Denise, Victoria, Alan, Victoria, Timothy and Cameron, uh, Stephen and Caitlin, um, uh, Rachel and uh, Jonathan and Joshua and, and all the rest of the family, Lord. We ask you that you would provide for the, each and every one beautifully and bountifully, Lord. We pray for recovery where there's weakness and sickness. We pray for strength and that you would continue to fortify each and every one of them. Huh. An almighty everlasting God in whom we live and move and have our being, who has made us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Grant us purity of heart, strength of godly purpose, and soundness of mind, so that no selfish passions nor ambitions would hinder us from knowing your will, and no weakness, laziness, nor cowardliness would keep us from doing it, that in your light we may see light clearly, and in your service we'd find perfect freedom through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Lord, thank you for being with us. Watch over us this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, friends, I'll be back again tomorrow. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be any trees getting cut down while we do this. Until then, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.